incredibly honored uh, tonight to have uh, William B. Davies uh, speaking to you guys. Um, they'll also be spending the weekend with us via fires. Um, I'm sure I'll be very sick of this by the end of it. Um, over at Fan Expo, uh, he's going to be signing there and also be spending a little bit of time at our booth uh, and also doing a, another talk on skepticism. Um, and I hope that all of you can uh, make it out. It's on uh, Saturday evening at 6 uh, at the Metro Toronto Convention Center. Uh, as for uh, tonight, I just want to tell you a little bit about Bill, uh, for those of you who aren't already familiar uh, with him as the uh, cigarette smoking man um, uh, from the X-Files, of course. Uh, personally, I, I think I knew him first as uh, his brief stint as Arvin in uh, Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future. Was that 1988? <laughs> I, I did, I did, I did. Do you have a copy of it? I don't, no, I, I think I legally stole it off the internet, but apart from that, <laughs> uh, what else you may not know about Bill, um, Adam Water Skier, um, he is in uh, ridiculously scarily good shape, he can kick probably everyone's uh, ass in this room, um, <laughs> uh, and uh, he's also a, uh, a teacher, uh, staunch skeptic, uh, he's a director as well as an actor, um, and he uh, founded the uh, William Davies uh, School of um, uh, Acting in, in uh, uh, actor study, pardon me, <laughs> in uh, Vancouver, um, and he's been uh, teaching um, uh, acting for over 50 years now. So uh, not only is he an expert as far as um, uh, the dramatic arts are concerned, but he's uh, had his hand in uh, the skeptic movement. Um, he has a lot to say about uh, climate, uh, climate change skepticism, and uh, I'm very happy to say that he's going to have a lot to say about skeptics of uh, themselves tonight. So uh, without too much further ado, I'd really like to say, um, Bill, uh, welcome, and uh, please join me in saying hey to Bill. Come up here, come up here, come up here, come up here. 
and he had me stand beside the table, beside the desk, and he said, so, so everybody was a, uh, was a Catholic, was a Christian, so uh, uh, aren't you a Christian? <coughs> and I said, well, what do you mean by a Christian, sir? <laughs> Someone who follows the teachings of Christ. And I said, well, you better count me out. And I went and sat down. Well, that let the cat among the pigeons, <laughs> and from there on, I knew I was different, uh, and everybody tried to save my soul. Uh, uh, they were quite worried about me, but uh, here I am. <coughs> and then, uh, jumping way ahead, of course, I found myself doing a television show about, if you believe it, alien abduction. And uh, many people seemed to think that I had chosen to be in this television show because I believed in all these phenomena. Um, not understanding that an actor is an actor, an actor gets a gig, an actor works, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so they kept asking me, you know, they, they, all, they wanted to take me places. They, but they're doing a skywalk. You want to come? They got to come with them. Oh, I've got this new information about Area 51. Finally, I had to say, you know, I don't believe this stuff. I said, what do you mean you don't believe it? I said, well, the onus is on you to prove that it's true. It's not on me to prove that it's false. I can't prove that aliens are not among us any more than I can prove that there aren't fairies at the bottom of the garden or leprechauns. And they said, oh, well, we have proved it. At that point, I didn't know what to do because I didn't know what the proofs were. So anyway, long story short, I found Barry Beierstein. I found Psychop. I found the... Uh, that real studies had been made on these subjects, and I found myself, I became a good friend of, of, of the late Barry Meyerstein. I started giving some talks on skepticism and started to get really involved with, with the movement, and so here I am. Um, now that I'm here, and now I have to learn, do I just hit projector to turn on the first slide? Uh, it's on right now. First slide is mine. I didn't want it on yet. <laughs> I wasn't ready for it yet. I can predict your first slide. Can you I'm see it? It's a little bit. So basically, I wanted I wanted uh, riff, I suppose, on on two words: uh, skeptic. And environment. Uh, and that's very good. So nobody can see me now. So I'll just turn. I'm definitely off. getting your star spot on. Just give me a little uh, okay. <laughs> And then I'll just do that. <laughs> So we're good. This is where we want to be, right at the moment. A, a, well, uh, a blank screen. That's fine. So there's two words: skeptic. Oh, I don't have any light. I don't work without light. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we have no happy medium here. There. 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 there that, is that the happy medium? Yeah, that's yeah. the happy. Medium. Okay. Better it's on me. All right, I'm not touching it. <laughs> um, these uh, these two words. Um, may, it may be that we need to rethink them, that they are getting us into a great deal of difficulty. We are heading, well, I'm sure you all have some awareness, and uh, uh, that we are heading to one of the, no, not one of the, the greatest crises that uh, human society has ever faced. And we're heading there faster than we realized. And two words are, to some extent, getting us in difficulty. And one is skeptic. Uh, yet we believe that skepticism is what we should be doing. We should be skeptical, all right? But there's, in, in the reading that I'm doing, at any rate, there's, uh, there's an enormous amount of information happening very quickly in two particular fields. 
One is climate science, and the other is uh, uh, what, what you might call neurobiology, I suppose. Uh, and they're leading us to an awareness of a problem that we have not really addressed in my view. Uh, so, going to the neuro, neuroscience first, Oh yes, I just do. Oh, center. And then I do. <coughs> so, uh, humans have been wired to formulate an idea quickly on the basis of limited evidence. They, that's been, I think, tested. It's fairly well established now that this is a human trait. Uh, and why not? When we lived as hunter-gatherers, if we didn't do that, we had very few descendants. Because if we heard a rustle in the, in, the, in the brush, and we thought, oh, there's a rustle in the brush. I wonder what that could mean. That could be the easterly winds coming up. Or that could be a squirrel. Or, oh, it was a tiger. <laughs> I'm dead. Uh, we learn to get away very quickly. I have bird feeders, and I watch the birds a lot, and they're always running away. There's no danger. I can see there's no danger, but they perceive one, and they poo, they away, and they go back, and they go away, and they go back. You watch any animal. They do it all the time. They're in a state of constant alertness, constant readiness to take a slim bit of information and say that could be a danger, and to act as if it was a danger. So it's, it's biologically a good idea. Um, but as we'll see, it's not a good idea uh, now. And now, here's one that scares the Jesus of me. They've actually tested this. And, and, and they've replicated it. If you go to someone who strongly believes something, and you present them with the contrary evidence, and the evidence really is contrary, they will more firmly believe their original idea. But don't change their mind. They become more firmly entrenched in their original idea than if you remember they got based on limited evidence. Now, Add one more thing to this, and they've tested this as well, is that we, are, we seem to be genetically wired to be optimistic uh, about ourselves and about the future. So as you may know, <coughs> nine out of 10 university professors are better than average teachers. <laughs> That's been tested. <laughs> Nine out of ten of us are better than average drivers. Well, you're probably thinking you are better than average driver yourself, in fact. Um, anyway, you put these three things together, and there's, there's some significant difficulties that may arise. Um, take uh, take, take uh, a recent one. Uh, Iraq for instance. Based on limited information, Iraq has weapons of mass destruction, and Saddam Hussein had something to do with 9-11. Okay. A lot of evidence against that. Oh, but no, 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 we don't accept that evidence. We take our original idea. And we're optimistic about the future. So we invade Iraq, because it'll be easy. We'll just knock him off. And, uh, know what happened. Um, so, just a peek, I'm not sure what I am. I just did, but I still got that one. Okay. Um, I mean, sometimes, sometimes acting on limited evidence is good. Uh, somebody lied to me once. They told me it would take three days to quit smoking. <laughs> okay. I've been trying to quit smoking for years. Three days, I can handle that. 
Okay, so I went away to the, my ski cabin and hid myself away for three days and I quit smoking. There, I'm a non-smoker. <laughs> took another six months before I really became sort of a non-smoker. But I had poor information, <laughs> poor evidence, and a good conclusion. Um, one of the things that comes out of X-Files uh, is this whole notion of repressed memory. And many of you may be aware of uh, the controversies that have been around repressed memory. But of course, it was a basis of the of X Files is that is that uh, through repressed memory, people uh, through hypnosis, people uncovered their repressed memory and realized that they'd been abducted by aliens. You agree with that? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was it became a, a lot more dangerous when uh, through the same process, people began to believe they'd been. Uh, sexually abused as ch children. And people went to prison for years uh, until, thanks to people like Elizabeth Loftus, the whole idea of repressed memory was overturned and these people were released. But, um, it's, it's interesting, I had an occasion, uh, I don't know how much you're in interested in the alien world you are, but I had a debate with John Mack who is a Harvard University professor, wrote the book, uh, Abduction. Really bright guy. He had a Pulitzer Prize for our work on perception. But he totally believed that people were being abducted by aliens, taken to spaceships, and experiments were being done on them. I mean, he, he was convinced of this. And why was he convinced of this? Well, one of the reasons that as an actor I found this a little alarming was because of the truth, the true emotions of the abductees, whom he called pioneers on a hero's journey. But their emotions were so real. Well, as an actor, uh, I'd like to say, we can create real emotions in imagined situations. That's our job. Um, <laughs> But what was really, what really struck me was I talked to him afterwards and he, you know, because there's no real hard evidence one way or another. And he said, uh, you know, some of them had reported that they'd seen him on a spaceship. Now he knew he had not been on a spaceship. So the one piece of verifiable evidence falsified <laughs> the, the, the whole story of the alien abduction. But he didn't accept. He didn't allow that to go in to change his mind. We're all fans of Richard Dawkins, aren't we? Um, I am. Uh, I am. I am. I am. He changed my life. I mean, and I'm serious about that. Uh, the Selfish Gene is one of the most important books I ever read. Uh, and after that, I knew pretty well everything he ever wrote. Um, but some of you may or may not know, he launched a campaign against the X-Files. He said it was promoting pseudoscience because every week uh, on the X-Files there was a <coughs> proposed uh, possibility with uh, a rational explanation from Scully and a paranormal explanation from Mulder and the paranormal explanation always won. So therefore this would be uh, encourage people to believe in these paranormal things. Maybe it would, I don't know. Point is, he didn't know. What was his evidence? He had done no research on the subject. Um, in fact, it, it was a little counterproductive because similarly on every episode there was a, an idea posited and a woman had one idea and a man had another. And the man was always right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I didn't get into that side of it. <laughs> but at the, uh, uh, this, at the American Atheist International Convention, I was 
was speaking with that. I had a chance to meet with him briefly, and I thought I'd only get a chance to talk to him about uh, this position he had on the X-Files. Uh, so I introduced myself. And he looked at me, oh, oh, were you on the show? <laughs> I guess he didn't watch the show very <laughs> So not only did he not know its effect, he didn't know who was on the show. Um, but I'll, I'll come back to my other worry about this stuff, uh, my hero Dawkins in, in a bit. Um, so, stop to think through everything that we're presented with. So we don't do that. We actually think everything through. You know, at what point do we stop? At what point do we stop thinking things through? At what point do we stop saying, but there's another sign, there's another other possible evidence? Uh, as, as we know, the, the argument about uh, tobacco and smoking went on and on and on and on because people kept saying, oh, but the evidence isn't clear. We're not sure yet. We don't know absolutely. Um, it <laughs> depends what you want to do, doesn't it? Because I think it was Rumsfeld who said, uh, or Cheney, I can't remember. If there's a single chance one chance in a hundred that Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction, we gotta go get them. But if there's a pretty good chance that climate change could destroy the world, we better not bother about it because it'll affect my shares in uh, whatever oil company it was. I'll get back to that. Um, but let me go to, yeah, let me go to 2007 and the most recent IPCC report, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which I'm sure you all know about. And it was scary. It was really scary. Um, and it was very clear, it was very cautious, but it was very clear. And I remember thinking, the world's gonna change. It's gonna change now. Uh, David Suzuki called it the equivalent of five Pearl Harbors, that it was that big a bombshell. And if you remember, it only took one Pearl Harbor for the United States government to turn on a dime and totally change its economy into a war. I thought those kind of things would happen. I thought we would stop flying. I thought we would all get little tiny cars, uh, uh, SUVs. I thought. Uh, and then for a while that sort of happened. People looked at people with SUVs and said, what are you doing driving that? Uh, and they successfully blocked the third runway in, in London and blah, 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 blah. But basically nothing has happened. And that's five years ago. Um, if you want to read something really depressing, read um, Bill McKibben's article in Rolling Stone. Uh, just recently, it's on, you can get it on the, on the web. It gives the three basic numbers, how much carbon's in the air right now, how much, uh, how much more carbon we could take to stay within the two degrees uh, uh, Celsius of increase that we say we can tolerate, and how much is being produced. And it's, the math is, just says there's no, not a chance we're gonna stop at two degrees, and the other argument, so, Either two degrees is way too high anyway. Um, so, but it's the skeptic, it, it brings me back to the word skeptic, because it's the skeptic has now become the denier. The, the skeptic uh, in climate is, of course, the, they're the ones who say, oh, we need more study, uh, or the evidence isn't conclusive, or blah, 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 blah. 
They are the skeptics. They are the scullies. Maybe we need to be the molders. Maybe now we need to do something. Maybe we need to say enough's enough. We know enough. Uh, keep studying, keep studying, but we need to act. It's, uh, I mean, going back to the, the denial, it's so, it's, it's extraordinary how people will deny climate change. Um, a, a friend of mine, I guess he's not such a good friend now, he was a really interesting man, he'd been an advisor to Ronald Reagan, a really smart guy, I can't remember how it came up, with and he actually said, oh, climate change, oh, that's a hoax designed to raise our taxes. <laughs> Okay, um, um, and somebody told me that there was, uh, in the last election, there was someone was leading a campaign and saying, climate change is bullshit. No, louder. Climate change is bullshit. Climate change, and so on. So I mean, that's the level of argument we're dealing with here. <laughs> We're going to say it the loudest. Climate change is real! We know, of course, that the, the media uh, are not on our side in various ways because, uh, for one reason, they need controversy. Um, we all know that as skeptics. I mean, whether it's alternative medicine or whatever the subject is, uh, they always present it as if it's a 50-50 case. Um, and they did that with alien abductions, they do it with climate change. The 50-50 case, it's a 50-50 chance that it's real, 50-50 chance it's not, makes good television. It doesn't make good science, and it doesn't make for uh, a long-lasting uh, uh, future for us. It was interesting when I was at SciCon because they, uh, it's CSI, right? And uh, it was Joe Nichols said, you know, most of the people here think it's Committee for Scientific Inquiry. It's actually the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry. But maybe it should become the Committee for Scientific Inquiry. Maybe skeptical is a word that's now been so uh, abused by the climate change deniers that it's not useful for us. Anyway, let's, let me move back to environment. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm going to go past that. Those are all things that slow us down. Aha. Uh, interesting book by Stuart Brand, who was one of the original great environmentalists did the whole earth catalog and so on. That's a fairly recent book where he's arguing fiercely in favor of nuclear power, cities, and genetically modified food. And saying, without these, uh, he doesn't see how we all survive. Um, and saying that, you know, the first thing any scientist, environmentalist, or anyone needs to be able to do is change his mind or her mind, and he has. Uh, and in some ways, the environmentalists are causing us more problems than they're solving. Uh, the only immediate way we have to reduce fossil fuel dramatically is with nuclear power. Uh, nuclear power has a lot of disadvantages, but it doesn't produce carbon. And that's our biggest enemy at the moment. I mean, yes, there's other renewables we'll get to, we'll get to, we'll get to. But in the short term, what else have we got? Um, but, so the, envi the environmentalists have become sort of a um, fringe group, in a way. Right? They, or certainly that's how they're categorized by our Minister of uh, Environment and our Ministers of this and that. Uh, radical environmentalists, we're called, because we're trying to block a pipeline. Oh, dear. We don't want a pipeline from the oil sands through pristine British Columbia to oil tankers down the coast. Uh, personally, I think we're fighting the wrong battle there. Um, 
I mean, yes, we don't want a pipeline doing all that, but the real danger is we don't want to burn that oil. We don't want that oil to come out of the oil sands. Of the, of the amount of carbon that the universe, or the planet can handle, half of it's in the oil sands. So if that burns, then there's only that much left from everywhere else. Uh, so we need to stop the oil sands, not because of the pipeline, but because of the carbon. Uh, but I'm, I'm riffing again. Uh, this tree, <laughs> I saw this picture. There's a lovely environmentalist holding onto a tree. Right? This, is, this, this is how they see, this is, I'm sure how Stephen Harper thinks environmentalists are. He's hugging a tree. Uh, the caption actually was tree hugging, I think. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, you probably know more about forestry than I do, but it looks to me like a second growth tree. So if it's a second growth tree, it was planted by humans. And if it was planted by humans, it pulled carbon out of the atmosphere while it was growing. And if it's cut down and used as lumber, it'll maintain that carbon until that lumber eventually decomposes. But if you leave it to live, it will eventually die and release its carbon back in the atmosphere. So, I don't know, is that useful? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, old growth, yes, obviously old growth needs to be protected. But, but uh, David Suzuki has said that we made a great mistake. He is uh, speaking, we, I'm not speaking for me, speaking for him, as environmentalists. We made a great mistake by having an environmental movement by having departments of environment, by having a separate environment, because it separates the environment issues from everything else. So it becomes a special interest. And when they sit in cabinet, they can say, oh, what about the special interest of the environment? But if it was finance, you don't talk about the special in interest of what it costs in money. That's part that's integral to whatever action you're going to take uh, as a government, as an economy. So his thought is somehow the environment has to become part of the centralized process of, of decision making. Our own, uh, I'll, I'll finish by, our own prime minister is making a Faustian bargain. And I mean that seriously. Suppose you had, just suppose you suddenly inherited a huge tobacco plantation. Great, a tobacco plantation. I market this tobacco, I'll be rich. Let's suppose you, you weren't poor, you were getting along fine, but suddenly you've got this great tobacco plantation, so you could become very rich. Of course, you know you'd kill people along the way because people would smoke that tobacco when they would die. So what would you do? What would you do? What would you do? So that's what our prime minister is doing. He's discovered that we can become an energy superpower with carbon. And yet we know carbon will destroy the planet. It will destroy his children. It will destroy his grandchildren. It's happening faster than he knows. It may even happen in his lifetime. But no, we're going to be an energy superpower. Okay, well I agree it's not as simple as I make it. We can't just shut everything down. But um, one of the things that uh, McGinnis says that's, that's part of the problem is there's something like, I think his number was $27 trillion factored into carbon reserves in oil companies that they have the they have this much reserve, this company, and mobile has this, Exxon has this, blah, 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 blah. and that's why their share level, shares are, are where they are, because they have these reserves of carbon, of fossil fuel. If that fossil fuel becomes useless, those shares will collapse. If those shares will collapse, the housing boom will be a, a little joke compared to the, the economic collapse that could happen. So the solutions are not easy, but I don't know what they are. Uh, 
But what I do feel strongly about is there is not a choice between the economy and the environment. Climate change will thoroughly destroy the economy. So to say we're going to not worry about climate change to protect the economy only means we might delay the effect of climate change. But we will, in fact, make it worse if we delay it. So for economic reasons, we need to take climate change much more seriously and, and stop burning much more carbon. So, as I said, I'm talking a lot about things I don't know a whole lot about, but that you can tell I feel strongly about. Uh, <clears throat> Did I have another slide? Ah, this paralysis. When, <clears throat> when we keep examining the future, we keep saying more, study more this, more that, more, and we don't take and uh, somehow I think maybe it's time we figured out what action to take. And I think I'll leave it there. Thank you. Questions, discussion, argument? Yes. Um, I wanted to go back. First of all, I'm kind of curious what your second reservation about Dawkins is. But I, my question is. Oh, I tell, no, I'll tell you what it is. I'm sorry you mentioned Okay. I want to start. Start with you. <clears throat> no, the thing that really bothered me about Dawkins though, was at this very convention. And he was reading from and talking about his book, The Greatest Story Ever Told. You know, and it's a wonderful story about the evolution of, of life on the planet. But what's the ending? He didn't say a word about climate change, or the dangers of climate change, or the risks we face. It was just as if it's all wonderful and it's all going to go on being wonderful. That's a word. Yeah. Um, I wanted, so thank you. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, sort of related to your first issue with, uh, with Dawkins, which was when he was talking to you about, about the X-Files, but more generally, I wanted to ask what you think about when you are a, a public figure, particularly a public intellectual. Dawkins is merely one example of that. Uh, time is finite. People's efforts are limited. Uh, even your talk tonight very clearly is about things that you are A, passionate about, and B, have you don't know much about. <laughs> By your own admission. I, I don't mean, I, I don't, no, no, no. But, so, but to avoid the situation that Dawkins was, was in, in, in regarding the X-Files, should people, or at least uh, public figures, be limited to speaking what they are truly expert about, or only after they have either read or conducted thorough primary, primary research? Uh, like, no. What's the balance between speaking intelligently with limited information and speaking comprehensively, but again, only after you have done thorough uh, research into any particular topic. How does one strike? Is there a reasonable balance? Should it be much more on one side or the other? Or if there's a compromise position, how do you find it? Well, a certain degree of humility, I think. Um, I wouldn't have been a, in, so bothered about Dawkins if he'd said, you know, I wonder if it's the case that if you do a television show like this, that it would have that result. Um, he stated it as if it, he knew that it would have that result. And he had no way to know that. Uh, similarly, the climate deniers state their same kind of evidence against climate based on very limited time and limited whatever, as if they know. And they don't back up and say even it seems to me that it might be this, but I notice that 97% of the climate scientists disagree with me. Uh, you know, um, so I guess there's also certainly a difference between bar talk and uh, 
and as I say, public talk, I guess, because he did this in the, in the Dimbleby Lecture, which was a big, big event in 1996. Um, so it was very, very public, at the height of the X-Files. Um, and I had done a little research in the sense that when I talked to X-File fans, I said, how many of you believe that there are aliens among us? And half the people put their hands up. And that was about the same statistic as people, as polls had found in the general population. So there didn't seem to be a difference between X-File fans and the general population. Very limited study, I have to admit. But it was one, one step more than he had done. But I think uh, it's an interesting way you put it as a public intellectual. I think you have a responsibility to make sure uh, you uh, qualify your knowledge. Your opinion is interesting, always interesting. Why not? You know, talk and say it's my opinion that does this. Why not? Question? Yes? It's more of a point. Uh, person that was saying uh, advocating nuclear uh -huh. because it would uh, uh, it would be a, uh, you would be able to get rid of the uh, using carbon yeah. uh, there's no way for us to produce steel or cement without coal and there's 700 million cars that use gasoline and diesel that can never be converted to electricity so nuclear is not really an option uh, well, what you say is not an option either. Because, I know it isn't, uh, but, uh, <laughs> it, it, but his, well, his option really isn't an option. Well, uh, it certainly can. It's yeah. certainly, it certainly can greatly reduce the carbon. Yeah. Um, uh, for one thing, yeah. you know, if your electric vehicle is powered from a nuclear plant, yes, um, you stop. You've, you've taken seven hundred thousand. You would have to convert the, the entire world fleet to electric vehicles. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, it's going to happen. Okay. In California, uh, in California right now, you can't use the carpool lane unless you have an electric vehicle. <laughs> um, now, I'll qualify that. More people. Um, uh, you might be able to if you've got a lot of people in your car. But as a single driver, uh, they, have, they used to allow hybrids. Uh, now they don't allow hybrids, but only electric. So there's a move in that direction. As for the manufacturer of steel and that, I don't know what uh, it Steel and cement are. are the single biggest uses of coal, actually. Believe it or not, they're actually bigger than producing electricity in the world. Uh, OK. They're not in the States, but they are worldwide. Yes. Yes. OK. I would actually throw the other argument forward is that no one says that you have to get rid of all the carbon at once. And no one says, why can't we have nuclear, reduce where we can, and if we can't reduce it, we can't, right? No one, it, this is not the idea just to say, this is a large source, we still can't reduce it. That's not an argument. No, 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 I think, no, I think this, this is a good point, because we even do that as individuals. Yeah. As individuals, we say, well, what difference does it make whether I do this or that? Um, you know, uh, because no, the, the other person isn't. I mean, if we say it's all more of that, you know, I, uh, why should we stop using these boats because everybody's using bigger boats? Well, as long as you keep saying somebody else is worse than me, somebody else makes more than me, we never do anything. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, I remember a ski racer once saying, we'll always finished last, but he was a really great guy and he always presented the awards. You know, if the person who finishes last stops racing all the time, then soon there'll be no races left. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have it. Yeah, so uh, to kind of go to the whole Sherman drama about nuclear, it seems, if you look back 10 years or so, um, the, the, the two antagonists of the battle were like the Cardenistas who either denied climate change or thought that it wasn't our fault or thought that it wouldn't be bad or whatever particular poor reasoning they had. And then there was everyone else, the scientists, the environmentalists, the technophiles, et cetera. But lately, it seems like it, there, there's been a further splinter. And it's, it's a, to me, it seems like a, this is something that's worrisome. It seems like the good guys have splintered. So now, instead of 
the, the carbonistas and, and the environmentalists who have um, the fossil fuel files, the technophiles, and the Luddites. And so now the good guys are fighting each other. Well, the, the, the bad guys in this particular fight um, are, are sitting back and laughing. So what do you think the solution to something like this is? How do we kiss and make up and decide that um, nuclear power, cities, technology, using wood, and cutting down second growth forests is a small price to pay to not have the environment Blow up yeah, it's, it's, I mean, that's, and, and, you know, and, and the genetically modified food is a huge yeah, issue in, the, yeah. in, in that same thing. And, and I hear both sides, and uh, I certainly don't know the answers. I mean, and, you know, it's, it's, and it's not me personally who's saying about nuclear power. It's very reputable science. The scientists are saying that, but um, I think uh, I think one aspect is 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 being left behind. And I think it has to be, which is the sort of back to the land environmental idea. That it would you know, be lovely if we all lived on, on little farms or little, little plots of land. And it would be if there were only a million of us. But if there's nine billion of us, that's just not going to work because you generate a lot of carbon when you do that. Um, so, so, and it all, it, so, so, I think we we have to think bigger. We have to think. In, we have to meet the big guys with big guns too, you know, um, and big weapons. And uh, you know, we could become a superpower in energy, in renewables. You know, and, and uh, I mean, Harper could have made a different decision. You know, it would have taken a little more time. Uh, but there's no reason why, why this country, you know, with all its, all its resources, it's it's, it's uranium, um, it's tides, it's wind, it's whatever, um, couldn't uh, couldn't become a powerhouse. Uh, but it's a good question. I mean, I don't have, a, have an answer, <coughs> but I think you you draw an interesting concern. You know, we have to make sure we're all talking to each other and all working together. Yes. I just want to challenge you a little bit on your um, definition or attempt to talk about what skepticism might be. Sure. And it seems like it resides, uh, I'm going to paraphrase you here, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but there seemed to be the denier as, as a definition of skeptic, which I really, I wouldn't put that as, as a definition. I would say that the skeptic resides in gray areas. And I, I, to, to take this to your discussion about the environment, I, I don't for one second, I don't want to come across that I, that I deny that uh, global warming is any kind of an issue at all. It, it just is. But I live in that gray area. It's also not, I don't think it's, it's something that you can say equivocally, uh, unequivocally that the end of the world is not because of global warming. We don't, we see models. The models have predicted many, many possibilities, none of which are necessarily good, don't get me wrong. But I mean, it's not, it's not necessarily the end of the world is coming very, very fast. There's a lot of gray area in there, and there's a lot of room for the possibilities for some areas of the world to actually prosper quite well under uh, global warming. So that's, to me, the area where skepticism is in the gray areas that exist within the science that's there. Not denying the science, but, but looking at that. But you're, you're in the same area, I'll, I'll, I'll just say, I'll brief, you're in the same area as a lot of the climate skeptics are in. The, 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 not necessarily deniers, but they say we don't really know, and there's this possibility, and there's that possibility, so blah, 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 blah. But we don't. Uh, it depends on what you're doing. <laughs> oh, 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 no, 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 please answer. So, so there, there is, Armageddon is coming. That's the only possibility. If we don't do anything, if we don't do anything, yes. If we, if we keep burning carbon, do you want to know the real Armageddon, which James Lovelock says? We become Venus. We release the methane. The methane comes, we become so hot that the oceans evaporate, and we're Venus. Now that is Armageddon. And I'm not saying that's going to happen. <laughs> but somewhere between that and, and the status quo is worrying me a lot. But anyway, yeah, go ahead. 
from what I'm getting, the idea is skeptic is more of the objective point of view. But is that what you're trying to put? Say, rather than live in the gray area or deny, it's like, or yeah, you well, can be objective and say, look at the evidence and say, where is, where we, where is the evidence pointing to? And so yeah, I mean, I mean, this, I mean this gentleman is right. That is where we have lived as skeptics. I'm not. Uh, what's making me nervous is that is that we can go on doing that, and science goes on doing that. Science, we, we could do this, we could do that, we could do that, um, uh, and maybe that's Munich, maybe that's uh, Chamberlain. You know? Oh yes, uh, yes, they're, they're, uh, Hitler doesn't look too good, but uh, I think it'll be all right. Um, I have I have a quick point to make. Um, yeah, I'm interested in, in knowing how what your take is on, on Al Gore and the inconvenient truth. And uh, we we've, we've seen his his view on global warming, and we also see you know a firm establishment view on the carbon tax. And you got a lot of patriots in the United States that are are firmly anti-government, and you can see that. And how how does skepticism and in your opinion, people who, I don't know if you remember Kevin Nealon's show, Conspiracy Theory, no, or he had, he had a brief show, right. Kevin Nealon did. Yeah. How has that all evolved in terms of, you know, it's modernized now, we, we know where we stand with global warming, and then there are those people who are labeled, you know, just kooks and, and what have you, and, and those people are kind of, you know, laughed at. So um, how has the skepticism movement you know, kind of risen above all that rhetoric that we hear a lot about in like the info war and alternative media and the stuff that floods the internet as opposed to mainstream media? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it, 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 just it, skepticism in general, how that yeah, it, it differs, how that differs, that movement. Um, I'm not sure how that started. You started with Al Gore, and I'm not quite sure what the connection is. Oh, his, his take on global warming about how the inconvenient no, no, is widely I, accepted and, and opened up the public's eye to, to global warming. It's strange. It was widely, widely accepted, and yet nobody did anything. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, true. Your point with the SUVs. Yes, exactly. Yes. yes you um, know, how, your, your argument, that I would say, about how the, the action just hasn't taken place. And, Given, uh, given uh, someone I just read, I think it was Lincoln, quoted Obama on the day of his election of saying uh, something to the effect of, this is the day that the warming stops and the planet begins to heal. And that was four years ago. Yes. I'm interested, uh, my background is in sociology, and so I'm interested in, um, I, I understand and, and and kind of mechanism of how humans need to categorize and need to uh, collectivize and need to identify with particular things. And, and again, until you raise the point that the people who could be labeled skeptics in, in the case of global warming um, would be, say, the opposite side uh, to what I would consider myself to be. Right. Um, again, that raised that kind of raised a question in my mind. It's like, well, what is what is an alternative to represent uh, an individual who is uh, perhaps, I guess I feel like I'm on the side of rationality more often than not. Um, again, I think I am less subject to particular types of self-interest as others, but perhaps not economic interests that guide some of the, uh, the science that's sort of questionable. So again, I, I wonder, and I, I'm, I, I suppose engaging everyone, uh, um, wondering what, what is the alternative? There was, an e there was an easy way to identify myself before. Mm -hmm. And now I kind of think, well, wait a minute, given the, given the, the individual context, maybe that's not universally applicable. Anymore. I use critical thinker rather than skeptic because uh, too many people just see skeptic that would go, you're just going to mm. tell me I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Often is when I'm saying, well, wait a minute, 
what's the evidence to support your assertion? People say, well, you're just cynical, and you're just not going to believe anything I say. And then you try to explain it. I think that's the term skeptic, especially when I'm talking to my very concerned family members. And they say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And they say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm not going to believe anything you say. And I say, well, I'm